Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, February 25th, 2020, regular selectmen's meeting. Is uh, Selectman Pendergast is out with an illness. Is uh, Selectman Guinea is working tonight. Is the rest of the board is here, town manager, town clerk. The whole rec department, it looks like. Planning. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> Cessa, <laughs> is uh, planning board, and most everybody else. Is uh, please stand with me <clears throat> and salute the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have the uh, January 28th meeting minutes to approve. I'll make a motion that we accept the January 28th, 2020 me minutes as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Is, uh, we don't have the proper people here for the February 11th. So we'll table those. Uh, first public comment. First public comment, 15 minutes long. If you have a comment, please step to the microphone, address all questions and concerns to the board. Is there any public comment? <coughs> Is, uh, we have no public hearing tonight. Is, uh, reports of committees. Is, uh, BCTV does not have a report tonight. Um, I have Envision Berwick is meeting next week, I believe, would be the first one in uh, quite a while, so is, uh, we'll have a report at the next one. Uh, department reports, it says water department. Well, yeah, it's really not a department report, it's a request. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the water department um, and through their engineer, Amanda Keys, um, who worked for uh, uh, Ty Bond, uh, submitted a grant application or for a loan through uh, DHHS and the water department. Uh, we were approved for 1.2 million. It's so we draw it down um, as needed. Um, so uh, we have quite a um, lengthy process that we plan on uh, in pilot studies to try to improve the water quality. Um, I think I've shared that with you uh, before. Um, it first starts with looking at uh, uh, chlorine dioxide, adding that into the water and trying to get rid of the disinfectant byproduct and also uh, work with some of the manganese to get that out. Um, it was kind of once we have all our test results, we can move forward with any, the, any improvements that uh, need to be done, which is quite a list of things that is going to require uh, upgrading some of our software, um, adding, uh, getting rid of our, uh, we have a waste bag, I'm sure you've been down there recently, mm -hmm. uh, that will be disappear and we'll be, uh, dumping stuff into the sewer, uh, which we haven't done for quite a few years from what I understand. Um, so the uh, Val from Underwood Engineering is working on what the limitations are of materials that we, they can take. I don't think it's going to be an issue because we've, you did it years ago and, and I think it was abandoned because it was very expensive, about $72,000 a year. But uh, with what the problems we're having, I think it's well worth the investment to start doing that again if it proves to be uh, something that will work. So I just need approval from the board to accept the, uh, 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 the loan at 1.2, and I'll have more detail with, I'll have Amanda Keys come to the board and walk through what uh, they're going to do at one of our meetings. Is, um, is who is the loan through? Is it's, it rural water? Or? Uh, it's through DHHS. It's a, through DHHS. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's a loan, not a grant? It's a loan, not a grant. And only what we draw down do, do we pay for. So we, uh, for the first year, I don't suspect that we'll be drawing down anywhere near the total. Um, Amanda has a guideline here that she paid, laid out, um, and we're into 2024 uh, before we... Uh, spend a couple hundred thousand, so we'll, but that's all preliminary testing work we have to do to make sure the system works before we implement it and, and, and do the work. And we have a plan 
on yes. how we're going to go forward? Yes, we do. Okay, is Amanda going to pr present that yeah, to she us? she can pre present that to you. I just want to make okay. sure we, we have to accept it, uh, the, the loan, or it will go to somebody else. Uh, she submitted the application, which outlined the, uh, the whole program. Do you need us to approve that tonight? Or do you yes. need us? Okay. Is, um, is how many years do we have to draw down on this? I would say, yeah, through 2021. That's what uh, Mr. Dawson said. So we have to draw it down. And what we don't draw down, it just goes back into the, in, into the fund. And uh, we'll have to apply again the following year. Any further questions? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the town manager to uh, pursue the loan from DHHS for $1.2 million for the purposes of correcting the problems we have at the water treatment plant. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that brings us to our presentations. Is we have Dave Andreessen from the Planning Board and Rick Vandenberg from the Recreation Master Plan. And we also have somebody from the Census say so yeah, busy night tonight. All right, good evening. Chairman Thank you. Board, Dave, Dave Andreessen, Chairman of the Planning Board. I just wanted to come in a couple weeks ago. I probably should have come in instead of having uh, or had um, James present. And normally I come in, but we were under a, a tight deadline to get this uh, to you guys in time, so James was willing to come present. Uh, one of the things that came up, everything kind of went well, and the, I think the wheels kind of fell off the whole presentation when we started talking about marijuana again and how we wanted to put a, a, a cap on it temporarily. Uh, and one of the things that James says, I think that there's fatigue from cer certain board members about dealing with marijuana. And I can attest to you, number one, I don't have fatigue from it, and neither none of the board members have fatigue from it. I've been on the board for six years now, and most of the board members that we have, and we have three here tonight, have been on here a very long time. Uh, and there's not a lot of turnover in the board, and I don't think there's any turnover any time besides you, but you, got, mm. you, know, you had to. <laughs> uh, you had to leave. So there's no fatigue. There's, there's really no fatigue because we know this is, this is what we sign up for when we volunteer for this board. and. and this is this is going to be a big thing and i think this is a lot of the reason that a lot of the board members wanted to stay on there so that we make sure that we do this th that we implement not only the uh, medical marijuana but the recreational sales in this town properly so there is no fatigue um, and maybe james has fatigue i don't know james says you know every day he gets applications but that's his job this is our job we don't have fatigue we can always go someplace else so um i just wanted to throw that out there so that there's not. I, a, I would think of all these years, you guys be getting to be old hat at it. <laughs> we, well, we are. I mean, I, we we are. You know, I don't want to say we're cook, uh, becoming experts on it, but you know, Hiding we're having to. Out. Yeah, so we're having Helpless. to, you know, ask ourselves less and less questions, uh, of you know, because we we're pretty much in tune with what's going on, especially with the um, the recreational <laughs> sales, which is coming soon. The reason that we wanted to have this arbitrary, and it's not, a, and I think you or, or, or Marx says it's just an arbitrary, and, and, and you know, arbitrary is just something that's just like, well, we're just gonna do it to do it. It's not an arbitrary thing. We wanted to take a slow approach and kind of digest how many businesses are gonna come into the town and see what effect it's gonna have. Just three or four years ago, we passed a moratorium in this town, for, for even for medicinal. We've had the police chief come in here with other law enforcement officers talk about the effect that it's going to have on law enforcement. We have a state that we are right, that right, you know, right over there that does not have recreational laws. That could create a problem as well. Uh, so we wanted to take a, a very slow approach at this. And I believe in the free markets like you were talking about, and it does make sense. The whole board is in consensus with that. It's going to, um, you know, it, it weed itself out, let's say. You know, no pun intended, but... I'll be reading that one on the Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, 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 will, it will, you know, the, the businesses, once the demand is there, and, and if they see that demand is not there, they are not going to succeed. It's going to be the bigger businesses that have the more capital, the more resources that are going to stay there. I mean, if you look at this town, there's a reason that we have one convenience store and two gas stations. The demand is not there. So I agree with that. But this is a little bit different, I think, um, that 
we don't know what we're dealing with. This is not your typical store. And if you look at, if, if you read the paper, if you watch 60 Minutes, if you see what's happened, what happened in California, what happened in Colorado, it was a boom and they're struggling now to catch up with it, especially with law enforcement. So I think we've got 14 in this town already, 14 that are either grow facilities, recreational, uh, potential recreational storefronts or, or um, dispensaries. And we've also been getting unsolicited comments from members of the public, whether or not we're, you know, residents when we're out, out and about or at the meetings that we need to pump the brakes a little bit and just take a time out. So we talked to James at the last board meeting, addressed your concerns. Uh, a couple of the, one of the board members, uh, Mike LaRue, he agrees with us, but he also says that it should be, it should not be an infinite time period. So I asked James, and hopefully he presented it with you to you tonight, the amend, there was one amendment to the land use ordinance for the, um, just for meta, or just for marijuana in, in that portion. I believe it's the last where it, it says that we, we're going to address this every year, that the board shall address this cap limit every year. So that, that would come then every year that we, as we're discussing land use ordinance amendments. I think we don't know. I mean, I, we're looking at April, May, I think, for these shops, these storefronts to open up. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in, in April or May. And I think that it's going to be a discussion that we're going to have to get into uh, with the police chief as well and, and, you know, and the select board so we can address it and, and hear from him and say, is, is, is there a problem? We can also look at it from an economic standpoint. But I like the fact that you're looking at, hey, these businesses have come in. Some of the assessed values of these properties are three and five million dollars, which I think, Tom, I think you said is more than prime tanning, which is great, which is great, absolutely great. And I don't want to take that out. Of, I don't want to take that away from the town, but I just think we need to pump the brakes a little bit and sit back and kind of digest this first few months or year, and and see what this brings to the town. So, is if I reading this correctly, is, is under uh, the thing it is. Uh <coughs> the number of conditional use permits granted in each zone as of June 9, 2020, shall be the limits of permits granted in each zone. The number of conditional use permits in each zone shall be tracked and monitored by the Town of Berwick Community Development and Planning Office. This provision shall be reviewed by the Berwick Planning Board and amended as needed on an annual basis. That's correct. That's the, that's the best language that we can come up with, and, and uh, Lee J. Feldman was there as well, and he suggested that we put that language in there. So, you know, we're going to have to go back and address this every year. Come next January, February, February, when we're looking at the land use ordinance amendments, once again, this is something that maybe we can workshop then and, and, and bring the chief in here, talk about any effect that it's had, and then maybe we, maybe we actually actually remove that whole provision in there in the land use ordinance. So it's just, it's just taking a step back from now because we don't know what we're dealing with. It's not like this is a restaurant or a, or a store or something like that. This is a whole different beast. It's, it, it really is, so. You know, we, I, and we had this, <coughs> allowing marijuana into this town narrowly passed by a referendum, I think it was 2016. Yeah. But 2016, and then we had the moratorium, which passed widely. So what's best for the town? I think what's best for the town is to have this business, but also to do it systematically to make sure that we can absorb that. So those are our recommendations. Um, and I'll, I'll, and one last thing, um, what was I going to say? Well, I'll let Nicole <laughs> jump in here. <laughs> so you get your thoughts, yeah. Um, Nicole Fecto, Vice Chair of the Planning Board. The only things I wanted to add is that because we're the ones that get the applications and we have to, we notice a butters and whatnot, so we get the public coming to our meetings. And just about every time we have a meeting where it's adult use or um, medical marijuana, whether it's dispensary or grow, we have a packed house and we've got very educated, we have a very educated public in this town. They're well-spoken, they come up, they and they've got great presentations. And we do have 
marijuana facilities, both adult use and medical, that are being put in. And granted, they are in commercial property, commercial zones, but they're near residences. We're on a site walk next week on Route 236 for, I believe it's medical, um, a medical dispensary. And there's a house on either side of that. Uh, it's things like that. You know, these places are allowed in those zones. But when it's your house that it's next to or your house that it's next to, then you might want to think about pumping the brakes. But like I said, we see the public. The public comes and talks to us about it. And that's what they're telling us. So we think it's our job to tell that to you. Because while we are absolutely in favor of business in this town, um, it's really hard to get other businesses here. And um, I don't, I don't want to see it overwhelmed with marijuana either. That is all. <clears throat> so the only other thing that I wanted to say is that we've had a, uh, a business owner who owns one of these grow facilities uh, from at uh, 420 Portland Street. She's been coming to the meetings a lot and just watching how we're discussing this. And we had the $25 licensing fee per year through the town. She says it has to be much higher. And I watched the last meeting and I saw Mark's do this. And he's absolutely right. I asked James and I asked Lee J to get to kind of survey the other towns and see what they've come up with. But it should be considerably higher because these businesses can definitely afford it. it so yeah, we, we, we did boost that up. Okay. Yeah, is uh, quite quite a bit. Okay. So and yeah, maybe I, not enough. <laughs> so you know, our, our very profitable business, as you say, <clears throat> and, and it does bring a lot of extra work for the town. You know, I have no problem at all. You know, is five thousand dollars a license? They they make that up in a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? So is that, I don't have a problem with that. So we, you know, all. we spent a lot of time on this, and, and it's it's just all a reflection. It, it's not people's personal opinions that are coming into play here, because you know I can t I know what people's personal opinions are on the board, how they feel about marijuana, and if they, if they like it or if they don't. But they, that's not coming into play. This isn't just like, no, we're anti-marijuana. We don't want it in the town. We want to stop it right now. And we kind of let something slip through the cracks. And, and I guess, you know, to a certain extent, the, the select board and, and the, the, the voters did as well is allowing a dispensary in, in uh, the CI district. We've got the two Bow Street. And when that came before us, I was like, that can't, that's not allowed in this town. And somehow we miss that. So these are the things that I'm talking about, the things that we're going to have to look at and see the effect of having a dispensary that might be next to a residence. Another concern that I have, and I'm sorry I keep going on and on, but another concern you have that I have, <laughs> I have, I, I have a big concern about Portland Street, okay? I, I don't, the traffic, Route 4, has Route four right, yeah. I have a very big concern about that, and I brought it up at the meeting, and I think that we need to get in touch with the DOT and talk about some safety improvements there, because it's a scary road, and we've wow. put more and more businesses out there, and that's where, we're sh that's where we're shoving all the industrial businesses out there, and it, it's it's a scary road and we got to do something about slowing traffic down or or doing something so th those are the concerns that i'm bringing up now that we've got those dispensaries out there on roof four are, are we going to have how many additional cars are we going to have you don't know so that's why we were just asking to just have this 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 time out here and let let us you know s you know see how this pans out if i'm understanding the language correctly it sounds like if you were to apply for uh, a permit for for, for for marijuana businesses up until June, you could still get them. That's correct, and that's what we're having. That's what we're seeing happen now. Yeah. Okay. And then um, you presented it much better than James did. James made it seem more like it was some sort of personal vendetta against it. No, just like, and that's and when I when you know. I you know when I heard from somebody about the meeting and how it went down, and I, I went to the I, I I watched it online, and I said no, you know I I, I apologize for not being here. Normally I'm here and, and I present. Yeah, um, I, so you know I figured you were sick, so I wasn't thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, well I, I mean James offered to do it, and we were under a time crunch, and I, I yeah. so I I, th I thought he was all wrapped up on that, and he did do a good job presenting the land use amendments and a lot of the things that went behind it, and a lot of those changes came from James as well. Um, that throughout the whole land use ordinance amendments, but it was just the opinion and the sentiment of the board that was incorrect. And also, it was not presented as a temporary cap. It was presented as a long-term cap. Um, in, in terms of a temporary cap to see how safety and how it affects the, the town, I would be much more in favor of something like that than just an like you said before, an arbitrary cap to just be like, right. we're done now because we have right. enough. 
if you look at the the way I look at the land use ordinance, everything in that is temporary. Everything in that could be changed every six months or or a year. You know, everything in that is is temporary. It's a it's a living document that could be changed every year, and that's what we do. So, comments? No, um. uh, I address a couple of the things you talked about. Uh, Route four in the traffic. Trust me, we've had hours of meetings on that, okay. and we've had the DOT down here for hours studying that and have some proposals. Unfortunately, most of the things that would really slow traffic down, like interchanges, changes at the interchanges and stuff, the town would have to pick that up, and we're talking about millions of dollars okay. now. Is, uh, no, we had them put no, the, the uh, rumble strips in, we've had them repost it, we've posted better signage, you know, is, yeah, we've, we've met hours on that. So is, I agree, there is something wrong there. Is statistically, if you discount the fatal accidents, that is a low crash area. Is, and the fatal accidents that have been there have all been to operate and neglect in one way or another. So it, it's not a matter of the speed, it's the operator. But is, um, as far as the public comments and getting people coming, believe me, I hear I know you do. a lot. Yep. You know, I'm out there also, and I, I get it both ways. You know, some people <coughs> don't think anything should happen, and other people think we should shut it off completely. Is, um, is, uh, so is that, that, that I understand, you know, you guys get it directly because you're dealing with it directly. Is, um, so I, I, I feel your pain there. Mm -hmm. um, um, as far as the neighbors and the businesses, that happens with every business that goes in is I would expect that on March 5th your meeting with Bibba Funeral Home on Cemetery Road is going to have a lot of people there upset about that business <laughs> and neighbors I've heard a lot about that so um, you know neighbors are going to complain they don't like changes but um, as Noah said is you know as a temporary thing to be reviewed each year I don't have as much problem with that yeah. um, <clears throat> Since it is something that does affect the town in such a way, and it affects, you know, the way we do business here also, is um, about the only change I would make to it is that it would be reviewed by the Burke Planning Board and the Board of Selectmen. Okay, in a workshop? Is uh, work, doing it in a workshop, okay. that way it takes the pressure off of you guys directly. And, you know, if I'm still here next year, is, you know, I, I can take the brunt of the blame. I don't and we can care. invite the chief in as well. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Right. It's good so. to know the select board's official stand on it too, especially from a planning board point right. of view when we're talking to the public. Right. So, is, but you know, other than that, you know, is a yearly, you know, a cap for now, and then approach it again. You know, we can study it over the next winter and spring and see what in, we've had. So, and maybe next January we say let's just take that provision out of there. Or we might say, let's shut everything down. You know, so is, uh, uh, or we could also create just an open window where you know, p only mm -hmm. a short period of time can people actually apply. Right. And then that open win that way it's not an all year round situation. Yeah, you could, you could do like with. the town of Elliott. They only yeah. give out eight building permits a year, and there's a line <laughs> that starts I two days well, in advance. We, we used to have that yeah. here. People were lining up right. days before outside the door right. waiting for those building permits. So sure. Is, uh, <coughs> Any other questions? Comments? No, I think it. All right, well, thanks it makes for hearing sense. us out. Thank, well, thank you. No, we right. appreciate all the work you guys do. Thank you. And you make our job easier. <laughs> I'd love to stay, but I hear you have a very long meeting, so. Oh, come <laughs> on. No offense to. Uh, <laughs> Good night, thank you. Good night. Well, have fun. Thank you. So that brings us to Rick Vandenberg and the Recreation Master Plan. Good evening, Rick Vandenberg, 51 East Pasture Road. Um, I got more sleep this this time, so I'm I'm you ready, willing, and able to talk. And um, I promised uh, Selectman Cobb that I spoke would speak for three minutes last time. I talked longer. This time I've come with with without a presentation, and my hope was just to um, solicit or answer any questions that you might have. Um, we've had a chance to look it over. Um, questions, comments? 
I should also say that I'm accompanied tonight by Natalie Gould and uh, Scott Richardson, from all, both from our group. I left my copy. It's a really good document. A really Thank good you. roadmap. Um, I have a couple comments. Sure. Well, one, 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 one comment, and uh, is you know, underfunding. You know, you go through the the history and how it's been funded and things. Is um, I, I think that one of the areas that it felt short was the very vague needs assessment that you know there to look at grants and things. You, you, there's no nothing identified in there yeah. as specifically as going after you know is i think that we could um you know look at where those grants are where those might come from and also with the self-funding aspect of it is the membership fees you no know, use fees is you know i think that if we had you know more of an idea with the committee thought that we could look to increase things like that yeah but a you know, minor thing you know is uh, no that's a really and actually we gave a lot of thought to funding um even though we sort of glossed over in the main document and and here's the rationale behind that this is a um a living document that if um you know we put a warrant you know, on on the ballot and it gets adopted it's going to become part of the current the existing comprehensive plan and our goal is they're going to take chat some some information out of that the comp the comp group that i'm sitting on as a part of developing the new comprehensive plan our hope is that we'll pull this appendix out and it will become a chapter in the new comprehensive plan and so specific to funding there's so many different things that recreation touches um, it's really a community-wide thing and we looked at the different funding sources that are out there um, you know, everywhere from uh, from rural development to um, to U.S. you know parks offer offer different grants, and depending on the grant and what what the use is, will really determine that 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 set, that chapter would have been just so onerous that it would have been um, it would have dominated the document, and um, I dir I'll direct you to our my cover letter that really kind of shaped the major issues. And we feel like the most important thing when it comes to funding is that we look elsewhere first. And I think you get that. We want we don't necessarily want to look to taxes first. We look want to look and see if for whatever project we want to do, whether whether there are other funding mechanisms. And if we do that and then we go that through the logical progression and we come to, oh, we've exhausted all these options, this is still a really important project and it's really high on the selectmen's uh, um, list then maybe it can get funded through, through taxes. But, but um, that's our stated goal. We want to add to the community. We think it's a perfect time to be doing all of these things with the changes that are, about, that are on the way right now. And um, if, we, if we do this and consider other things while we're doing it, I think, I think we're going to be in a good position. And as I said, you know, is the grants and, and, and things like that, I can understand, you know, is, uh, is I would have liked to have more of an input from the committee about where we could have you know added fees for usage and things like that you know i'm not familiar personally with all the different fees that people pay you know whether it be you know through the rec department or baseball or football or soccer so you know yeah. something like that would have would have been nice but i'm sure you guys will Give it to us now. I'm, I'm, I have no doubt about it. Yeah, I think I think you're going to hear more from Frank Underwood. Frank is Frank and Dennis Dupree have been working on sort of the the, the idea of funding, you know, and and our our there was so much to do on the planning side for us. We wanted to try to capture all of that and let the kind of priorities fall where they are. That's why we decided sort of. In midsummer last year's three and a half year process, this past summer we decided to include the capital improvement plan because we thought that that was warranted to start identifying what the projects are. Because then, once you know the projects, the projects will then lead to where you have to go for funding. Right. Any other questions? I thought it was very well done, very well researched. I mean, you got a lot of feedback. Uh, from people and stuff um it, it 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 it's exciting just to see all the stuff that you actually plan to to try to work on the new activities new new uh new sports and organizations 
I, I think that's all really great. As long as the as long as the demand is there, then you know you have my full support to to, to go as far as you can get to to fulfill that need because I know that you know. I, I've always I, I've always lived in towns and just like, I love that stuff where it's like you be small clubs whether it's sports or games or you know even maybe stuff outside of your knowledge base you know there's card you know card games comic books and you know every other kind of recreation in the world so just as long as you're fulfilling the demand that's there yeah full support so there's a lot of demand and and there's two components i mean there's obviously planned recreation things and then there's sort of unplanned stuff and um and so we think we, we sort of view them equally as important um when it comes to going looking for a place to go for for a little walk in Bur someplace in berwick versus you know trying to enroll your your kid in, in in whether it's berwick wrestling or whether it's baseball or whether it's soccer i mean those are completely different things so um th that's why the biggest thing that we learned as a part of our process is that we have we have great assets here in town, but we really lack we really need to help on the communication side, which will get the information out about all the assets that we have. And that's one place where we where I feel that we can start first. And the biggest thing is our group will sort of disband, you know, at this point once this is adopted, but we're hoping that, an, that another group will will take its place, one that can sort of show more leadership when it comes to when it comes to recreation, all things recreation. And as to the, um, the idea for a community center, I, I'm also all for that, but I know it's going to cost a ridiculous amount, you know, to, to get that sort of thing. If, if outside funding can be found for that as well, whether it's businesses sponsoring every corner of it, you know, like this is the Cumberland Farms room or whatever, I don't know. But, I mean, that's, I, I think that's the best way to go about it instead of going you know directly to the taxpayers to foot the whole bill that's because right. it's going to be it's going to be a huge compared to what the town is but i do think that the town would benefit by having one yeah. in a lot of ways and i know that there is ways to generate revenue for, from one but you have to have it before you can get those so and there are also other recre kind of planned recreational activities happening, whether it's through SAD 60, whether it's through the House of Hope, whether it's through some yep. things that are happening at the library. I sort of feel that the biggest thing that we heard, 95% of the survey re recipients told us that they favor a community center. But they didn't necessarily say that we, we favor, they favor a community center, that Berwick should go out and build one. I think what they mean is that in aggregate, we need to bring, you know, develop a community center, whether it's, you know, piecemeal, you know, that we can, that you do one thing here and you do other things there. You know, I, I think that that's just as valuable and it can be done probably at a much lower dollar. <laughs> yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do take exception to one thing. Hmm. Tell me. Is uh, Estabrook Park. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Is, as far as I know, there is no Estabrook Park. We, we envisioned a, um, and I think that the community sort of and some, commu and some planning board members sort of fought for the, the idea of doing some recreation in any space that's left over at Estabrook, and I think that's sort of the idea behind that. Is, believe me, I was at those planning board yes, meetings. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> is we had many discussions on this. Yes. And I agree that in the future there may possibly be some Thing going on there but it was purposely said and pointed out and labeled in the planning process that it was open space not to be used not to be defined as anything else right until a future you know use yep. has been determined I think it can be you know and not to not to get too far into that but I feel like um, that you know as a part of a lot of iterations for prime and the green this idea of a green spine that extended from all the way from school street up towards the library at the esterbrook parcel would certainly play a role in that and whether it's just uh, a paved walking you know path to get through that space or whether it's a place to then you know linger and sit or it's a place to read i think those are those those all sort of fit the bill in my mind um I take it personally as a backdoor way of getting this around me. I really do. And if that's included in there, I am not going to support this. Okay. 
Any other questions? I, I think I missed where, where that was. Under, under the inventory of trails and parks, uh, that's the first place is Estabrook Park, green space adjacent, adjacent to the public safety complex. Short walking paths connect the park to downtown across Wilson, Wilson Street and to Memorial Field via, via Sullivan Street. As you know, <laughs> is there is no connection from there to Sullivan Street right now. You know, and there's not going to be one down our access road. That was fought hard at the planning board. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the uh, chief of police, uh, fire chief, you know, did not want people walking anywhere near the <coughs> access road. That's why, you know, we agreed in the end to have a proposed path linking around the backside of the building. Mm -hmm. is, but <coughs> there is no park there. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, we do have an uninvited guest. <laughs> well, he was invited. He just didn't get on the agenda. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> is uh, Sterling Roop? Yes. Is this? Yes, what Sterling Roop. Census. Um, yes, I'm Sterling Roop. I'm a partnership specialist for the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, I cover Southern Maine, and I live in Biddeford, so I'm member of the broader community. And I think the census is really topical this evening when, you, when you're discussing all these issues around planning and the future and where Berwick is headed. Um, and one of the, the best ways to ensure a bright future for the community is to make sure everybody responds and gets counted in the 2020 census. Um, you know, we at the Census Bureau don't just sit around for, every, for a decade and then come out of our hiding um, behind our data sets to count everybody. This is a big process. This is the biggest peacetime mobilization of the federal government. Um, and it's a constitutionally mandated exercise. Uh, Article 1, Section 2 uh, mandates that, that we count everybody in the United States every 10 years. Um, actually, the sixth sentence of the Constitution. Um, and we've been doing this since 1790, when New York City was uh, about the same size as Bangor. Uh, is right now. So about 33,000 people. Uh, now it's over 12 million. Um, but, uh, you know, we want to make sure and, uh, you know, community access television here has been great. Uh, and Steve and the town have already been been great partners for us in helping us share the word because really the census, while it is a federally a federal process, um, it's really a community driven process. One that's driven by census employees who are um, brought, you know, hired in the community, um, our, our enumerators, the people that will be hiring to, to do door knocking. Um, they come from, we would try to hire from every single census track. So it's really a community driven exercise and your responses impact your community. Um, over $675 billion a year of federal funding is allocated based on census data. Um, that's for schools, for the roads and bridges that we, we use to get here, um, for parks and recreation, um, for Medicaid, Medicare. Um, you know, these, this is the best way to ensure um, federal funding comes, that you know, we're adequately represented here in Maine um, and, and in, the, in the community here in Berwick. Um, the reason why that uh, the census is in the Constitution, it's, it's how we um, divide up political representation. Um, it's our congressional districts are based on that. And then the state will take the data from, uh, from us to do our own redistricting here in the state of Maine um, and for our legislative districts as well. Um, so, you know, we're really trying to make sure everybody knows the census is safe, it's easy, and it's important. And I've talked about the importance. Um, Safety-wise, we work really hard. Every one of us is sworn to protect any personal information, not just while we work for the Census Bureau, but to the grave. Um, any personal information that you share with us will never be shared with anyone else. Um, we only share statistical information. Um, no government agency, uh, whether it's a federal government agency, a state agency, um, will have or ever have access to your personal information. There's one exception to that, and that's after 72 years we make census data public. So any information you shared in the 1950 census would now be public in 2022. Any information you'll share with us in 2020 will not be public until 2092. Um, I think uh, most of us won't be around then. 
Unless there's some great breakthrough in technology, right? Um, but you know, we take we take safety and per, uh, the you know, personal <laughs> information very seriously. It's five years in jail and a quarter million dollar fine for anyone who works for the Census Bureau who violates that oath um, to in, in terms of sharing any personal inform identifying information. Um, and it's easy. It's just nine questions. It's names, birthdays, uh, are you relationship status. Uh, ethnicity, do you rent or own your home? Uh, you know, these are this for the decennial census. It's really not. It's really not a difficult process. It's quick and easy. And this year, we're really trying to make it as easy as possible. The first invitation to respond will be coming out between the 12th and the 20th of March. So we're less than a month away. Um, and it actually be um, an invitation with a web address. Um, as well as 13 phone numbers um, because you can respond, you can call up in English, talk to somebody in English and respond. You can call up in Polish and speak to somebody um, in Polish. Um, if you want to call in and speak to somebody in Arabic, you directly do that. You can also just go on that web address and, and respond right online. Um, if you don't respond initially, we'll send you some reminders. Um, and then by mid-April, you would get a paper ballot, which is how we've always done the census in the past. If you still haven't filled out the census um, about by the end of April, um, that's when we send someone from your community. One of your neighbors comes to your door. Um, they're working for us, and they and they want they come to your door and they ask you those nine uh, easy questions. Um, we are hiring. It's twenty bucks an hour um, and uh, fifty eight cents a mile mileage reimbursement. Um, you apply online. It's very easy. Uh, set your own schedule. Work as little as ten, as much as forty hours a week um, at twenty twenty census.gov. Um, forward slash jobs. Um, we also just, co we don't just collect data for fun because we're data nerds. We are data nerds. Um, but we, we do want to make sure the data is used. Um, and we have a data dissemination program, um, which, is a which is a free public good. Something if the town, if the planning board, um, if you want, you know, you th uh, if there was a group of small businesses, the Chamber of Commerce wanted to, to learn more how they could use um, not just decennial census data, but you know the data we're collecting um, every month um, for you know Bureau of Labor Statistics or um, you know the American Community Survey, which is our kind of big survey that we do uh, all the time. Um, you know we have we can have somebody come in person and, and work with the town or you know a subsection a subsection of uh, of the community on how to use census data. You know you think about big corporations. Starbucks will never open a, a, a branch without digging deep into the, the the again the statistical information we provide um, about the demographics in a community. So if uh, you want to expand or 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 you know if it's grant writing too, it's, it's another great way um, that we can help uh, improve and kind of you know that the public can use what is a public good um, the data that we collect for the for the American people um, and I don't I know it's been a long agenda and I and I'm not on the agenda so I will leave no, it at no, that no, if no, you no. if anyone has any questions uh, I'd be happy to answer them um, but uh, you know we're just we're hoping everybody will respond yeah any questions no <clears throat> is um, say say somebody does get hired is yep. how long is the job good for yeah so we're we're we have, if you apply now you probably hear back from us in the next couple of weeks um, it's paid training um, and we we understand these are temporary positions so we will work around other job schedules um, so we'll, you know it's maybe it's a couple hours in the evening for the training um, but the bulk of the work would start March or March April and go until end of July, mid-August. Um, and again, it's kind of every week you can say, you know, this week I have 20 hours I can do, but next week yeah, I've got a whole bunch of things going on, I can only work 10. And so, it, you know, it, it is really flexible and we understand these are temporary jobs um, and it's it's a civic duty and also, uh, you know, a great way to earn a little extra money if you spend too much on over the holidays. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Any further questions? No. Well, thank thank you. you. Wonderful, thanks very, so much. I appreciate it. Yep. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. So that brings us to unfinished business. Is a transfer station fee increase? Yeah, Robert's department um, did a survey of all the communities and what their fees are. I don't believe we've changed them since I've been here. So um, we raised them uh, before you came. Yeah. yeah, when Gary was here. So it's know. a good time to take a look and. Um, and our costs, of course, go up for freon removal and things like that. So, and, and, and looking down through the list, is the only increase is the uh, pickup truck loads of uh, waste 
is that currently a small pickup load is $15 and a full size pickup load is $25. And uh, the proposed changes is $30 for the small pickup and $50 for the full size pickup. Yeah. But, so the <coughs> looking at the, uh, the, the schedule they gave for all the other ones in the area, it seems to be just about the same. Yep. So, uh, any questions? No, I move that we accept the proposed increases. A second? I'll second. Any discussion? I, I do have one question, and, and this is picky, and <laughs> that's mattresses. <laughs> I'm not sure why we specify just twin and full rather than just mattresses. <laughs> what do you do? If, what do you do with a queen mattress? Cut it in but, half. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but is, uh, I, I don't have yeah, a problem, I, I, problem with the increases as as presented. Yeah. Maybe you can't get rid of a queen in case. <laughs> no, uh oh, I'm, I'm in trouble then. Uh huh. Is uh, well, we'll have Hokey ask answer that for us. What is otherwise okay. is uh, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Thank you. Now, the, the big one, public safety access road name. Is, uh, I, uh, I asked uh, the fire chief, and he really didn't care. <laughs> is, um, is, uh, is, actually, when I asked him about it, he said, well, um, new address has been 20 Wilson Street, I think. So, is, uh, well, that's a, that's a police station. Well, that's what the fire station is listed to now. Yeah, or temporarily, yeah. Is, you know, is there had been a list of uh, some proposed names. Um, I did speak with the chief, and he would prefer it not be named after a person. Yep. Um, is a public safety road, it can be road, or lane, or drive, a court, or street. But you know, there's public safety lane, EMS captains, chiefs, safety, or public. You know, yes, yeah, those are the ones. I personally like the way that chiefs way rings, but As, um, I don't have a preference. I, I, I suggested wrong way, and Jen told me I couldn't do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> You have a <laughs> yeah tough. Uh, I kind of like public safety lane, but a public safety way. I mean, it's a public safety complex. That, that's kind of why I'm heading towards yeah. public safety, but I'm not hard over one way or the other. Flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is, I, I, was, I was thinking somewhere along the same, you know, as, as you know, along the safety way, as, uh, but. Um, <clears throat> Public safety way is totally Sent, That fine. sounds, that yeah. sounds good. I mean, there's, there's really no wrong answers here. So. No. So, uh, we uh, really don't need to vote on it, do we? Yeah, you do. Yeah, yes. we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you do. Oh, we on. talked about this the last time. Yeah. Oh, man. When it was mentioned. Big All decisions. Right. I, I, will, I will make a motion that we... Uh, Name the road leading into the police fire station public safety way. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Decisions. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Got to make a decision. Like I said, there's no wrong answer. Yeah. Um, town manager's report. Um, uh, last week I got the report, uh, list of roads that the uh, MDOT will be uh, paving in Berwick. And it will be to 236, it's the part they didn't finish coming in. Um, Route 9 will be done. Um, part of Rochester Street will be done. Hubbard Road. Um, we did get uh, a grant for uh, the Sawmill Hill design project a year earlier than we thought we would, because I guess they must have had the money, and that's through the CATS program. James and I advocated pretty hard for that, and uh, they put us out it's always seems like we're always out, but this this is coming up this year, so uh, that's a nice project to have. Um, 
I have been trying to get a hold of the <coughs> superintendent of the schools and our school uh, board members, school to come before the board. Uh, I sent out another email today to see if I could get them to come present what their budget looks like in, uh, for the coming year. So hopefully in March we, we'll have them before us. And this is uh, Steve Conley's last year. He's retiring. So it would be a good chance to say goodbye. And that's really all I have for tonight. <coughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, last week we talked about the recreation uh, budget and the fact that uh, I asked if the after-school program was still in effect, and you told me yes. Yeah. Uh, saw an email uh, from Kim to the school board it saying that it was it – was, uh, She resigned on Monday. She resigned on Monday uh, so that we would not have an after-school program. Until we uh, find the replacement. Okay. Do we have any any potential idea of how long that's going to be? Because I, I, I'm a little concerned that we're getting into uh, the season for summer camp. Yep. And if we're not actively looking for people for summer camp now. We already are. Okay. Yeah, we've already started that process um, with uh, Chris McDonald, who worked for the summer program. He and Kim and... Uh, her assistant did quite a bit of work, but he's picked it up. Uh, so he's talking to other uh, staff members who were participating in the summer program last year. And from what I'm hearing, most of them are coming back, which is nice. And, and if we have a shortage, we'll start advertising for uh, summer help as well. Okay. The ad for the, uh, to fill her position uh, was in the paper, in quite a few different areas. Um, and we're getting a fairly good response to people. Uh, some qualified, some not so qualified. So uh, we've reached out to uh, recreation uh, groups, uh, Maine and New Hampshire, along with MMA and New Hampshire's uh, equivalent of MMA, um, plus uh, Indeed, which is used a lot. So uh, applications and resumes are coming in. Okay. Uh, Sorry to see her go because she did a lot of good good stuff she for the rec committee. She was for many years. A lot of very passionate lot of things about what that she did. Uh, got implemented in her time frame. So, okay. Any other questions, the manager? Um, I have nothing on just letting communications. <clears throat> we need to uh, account payable. <clears throat> we have an account payable warrant two zero three five from February twenty seventh two thousand twenty. The amount of one million sixty-nine thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars and forty-six cents. We have a water warrant, zero three five, from February twenty-seventh, two thousand twenty, for the amount of nineteen thousand three hundred eighty-seven dollars and twenty-one cents. And we have a payroll warrant, two zero three five, from February twenty-seventh, two thousand twenty. For the amount of fifty-seven thousand thirty-five dollars and sixty-two cents, I will make a motion to pay our bills. I'll second. All those in favor? <clears throat> Thank you. Here's the fun one. And, uh, new business. Um, I do want to take something out of order here, is uh, so we can get Paul out of here early. If we could uh, go to the abatements. That. Uh, I think you would. <laughs> um, all right. We have four items. Uh, first one is a uh, an abatement on map R10, lot eight, seven Key Road, uh, owned by Michael and Candace Ryan. The subject property is a single family dwelling that had a um, a change in the quality grade um, from an average to an average ten during the revaluation field review. At that time, we weren't able to get into the property or visit the property. The um, owners have contacted us. We've done a full inspection, interior and ulterior and exterior, and uh, it was determined that the quality grade was overstated. So we're requesting that the um, <coughs> assessment be granted in the amount of 15200 reducing the value from 250000 to 235500 uh, an abatement, I'm sorry, in the amount of $266.46. So moved. 
Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. um, second one is a um, property on map R36, lot 24C. Location is 20 Sunset Lane. Susan Layton and Mark Donahue. Uh, the subject property is a single family home with an in law apartment on the second floor, detached garage, and in ground pool with distant views of the mountains. Um, the property owner asserts that the assessed value does not reflect its current condition and that the land is not assessed in the same manner as similar properties on that same street. Um, they also th provided a home inspection report from a month before they purchased the property in 2013. Uh, we went out there and did, did an interior and exterior inspection, found the condition to be overall fair. Um, also noted that there were several design flaws in the structure including you know a large hot tub that could not be removed without you know dismantling it or cutting the wall to get it out uh, windows that were inoperable lack of flashing in some areas of the roof and um, uh, so we did feel that there was an adjustment that was uh, required for that at the owner's request a review of the neighborhood was conducted and uh, a correction was made to the neighborhood code from a, a 50 neighborhood to a 60 which actually increased the the amount um, for all parcels on sunset lane it was also determined that the neighbor's property at 22 sunset lane had a mountain view uh, that us that are considered inferior to the subject due to its lower elevation so we made adjustments there as well uh, so after uh, as a result of the adjustments we're requesting that the value be reduced by 57,000 500 from 459,500 to 402,200, and an abatement in the amount of $1,007.98 be granted. So moved. Um, can I ask a question before? Um, well, we, or do we? we it, sure. It's, do it's, it's do moved. It right. It's we, moved. We have the second. I'll second it. All right. Any discussion? Any uh, questions? So this abatement is strictly for 20 Sunset Lane? Um, or is yes, so, yes. So are we expecting uh, additional changes for the other properties that you um, assessed? We, we won't adjust them for this year, but we'll adjust them going forward for next year. Okay. As of April 1st. All right. The um, the next one is no, a... Hold it on yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All those in favor? All right. Um, next one is a property on map 36, lot 35, 170 Pine Hill Road, owned by Jerry E. and Karen A. Letart. Um, the subject property is a seven-family apartment building that has been under construction since 2010. Um, the uh, building's estimated to be at about 42% complete. The property owner is concerned that the assessment does not consider the condition um, in a, you know, to, to complete the property. Uh, assessing, conducted an interior and exterior inspection, found that the condition was not typical of a building under construction, due, under construction due in part of it being there for 10 years and just sitting vacant. Uh, there's a lot of things that are leaking, the windows are leaking, there's no, the interior is totally gutted. I mean, there's no plumbing, no wiring, uh, just, a few framed walls but not many um, and there's you know material that's been there for years but it's just sitting there so as a result of that we did feel that there was uh, an adjustment that was needed um, so we're requesting that the property be reduced from four hundred and five thousand six hundred dollars to three hundred and sixty nine thousand um, a, th a reduction of thirty six thousand six hundred and we're requesting an abatement of six hundred and forty one dollars and sixty cents um, I have a problem with this one. Okay. <laughs> is this property has been a problem for Berwick for many years. Yeah. Is it sat totally open. It was a garbage heap. The neighbors complained about it for a decade before we finally made him do something. He went in there and did just a little teeny bit, closed it up, and now it's sitting again. And, you know, in my opinion, is from the condition it was in previously, and from what you're saying now is, I think the thing should be condemned. Is it's a yeah. piece of junk. 
I don't know that um, um, the code enforcement's been over there in, in any time recently. Probably not, no. I don't believe they have. And I, and I don't think there's an outstanding permit for them to go there. Yeah. So I think it may be something we may want to talk to Jen about and see if... Yeah, I, I'd like to table this one because, okay. it, you know, we've had a lot of trouble with that property over the years as we've had previous code enforcement up there. We've had the uh, DEP up there. Yep. You know, there, there are rumors of him burying garbage in the backyard with his backhoe. Is, and as I said, it said, it sat for a decade open to the weather, no windows yes. in it. Is I can't believe that the flooring and the framing in there is any good. No, there's a lot. Well, for the most part, it's dry, but there are several areas in there that have, you know, you can see the water has. I don't understand penetrated. how you can go 10 years and only have 42% complete. My brother could put up an apartment building in, in, in three yeah. months if you gave him, if you just gave him the money for it. So I just. You got to know Jerry. <laughs> yeah, this, this yeah property, it said it's it, at one time is because of the way it was an old farmhouse that he built part of the foundation on for the new part which is inferior to start with mm. is we had an engineer i believe we had the engineer come and basically <laughs> condemn it and then he went and got another engineer saying that it was fit and that's when he closed it up as um it, yeah i i think i think we need to have code enforcement go up there with a a thorough going over because, like I said, I can't believe that it's fit to be lived in. Yep. Okay. So let me let me just um, in 2017 it was valued at 249,000. Mm -hmm. We brought it up to 321.7 as a result of some I think it was siding or some some you stuff that was done to it. Yeah. Windows and siding on yeah. And then as part of the reval, we brought it up to the 405.600 as part of the reevaluation, and that's when he called and you know requested that we do an interior inspection. So. When we went over there, we found it in worse condition than we had originally seen from the outside. Is there sheetrock in that building? No. Because he had a whole tractor trailer full of it. Uh, Matt, that could be. Um, <clears throat> but there was nothing. There was some scattered materials inside, but the inside, there was no roughed-in plumbing, electrician, you know, no, electri no, electrical, nothing. no insulation. Um, it was well. just totally, totally just a frame, basically, with siding. And this, and this is a guy that owns millions of dollars worth of property in Berwick. Yeah. Millions. Okay, so we're going to table this one? Yeah. Okay. We'll table that one for now. Okay. And the last one is a sort of an um, administrative <coughs> abatement. Um, Great Works Test Boring is a business that was located at Fort Coffin Road. Uh, it's personal property count number 716. And they had moved out of the property in July of 2016, sold the business to... Um, S.W. Cole. Yep. Okay. Um, they, I believe they, they've never paid this tax bill, and I and Steve, you can correct me if I'm wrong, yep. but I, I believe we've tried to go after them to try to get the pay. They've never filed in the past for any other type of abatement, but we're just trying to get that money off the books, and so we're not spending attorney's fees and legal fees, you know, continually trying to chase it. So, um, as the assessors, you do have the right to go back to three years. Uh, we're looking for an abatement for 1718 in the amount of $196.33. Uh, for 1819 in the amount of $201.48. And 2019 and 20 for $200.68. And from what we've been told, the property has been moved uh, to New Hampshire for their other, you know, to another site that they own there. And maybe this is, Steve can elaborate. This is a property that a company that Mark talked about, and as we dig into it more, we find more stuff. <laughs> but this company now has a, a separate business called uh, Great Works Feed, uh, Feed over on Route 4, which is what Mark was talking about. And they are coming in to visit with Karen to right. get their uh, account up to stuff and they have personal property the feed I guess. store yep. yeah the feed store so that's going to clean this up completely okay so the the equipment that mark was talking about wasn't the leftover from the no. boring company it's the equipment that belongs to the septic company yeah which are the same people doing different great things. yeah yeah so 
I don't sure. I don't, I don't think she's been in yet, but she may have. But I, I don't believe she has. But she called me on uh, Monday. Okay. Yeah. Because attorneys have been going back and forth. Okay, so. Good. Yeah. So I think that will clean that up. So we're just basically trying to clean the books because there's no way to, to, no way to recover this. Well, this. they they don't own the equipment. They they bought the business. Uh, in 2016, yeah. so and they've just picked up all the equipment and left to New, went to New Hampshire. So they and we never knew about it. We and just they never billing. told anybody. And it's, I mean, the lawyers like to argue it's they don't have to tell anybody, but we send out requests for declarations every yeah. year, and yeah. usually good good business people respond. Those who don't care yeah. don't respond. I just got mine in the mail today. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the abatement as presented for fiscal for the year tax year 2017-18, 2018-19, and 2019-20. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Before okay. I leave, is there anything about personal property? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm pointing. I can read your mind. <laughs> Well, I, I just wanted you to weigh in on this company. Okay. I uh, went to Karen, our assessor, and asked her about MRI and do they chase personal property and make sure that each company that is covered. And right. she says, no, they don't. Uh, but there was a company that they use in Kittery and a number of other towns. Yeah, Gonquit uh, Kittery is the two towns that we do in Maine. Other and two towns. for the contract, it's, it's $9,000. I could spend that in legal fees chasing people. I think it, they'll come out on an annual basis and, um, and evaluate what businesses have for personal property. I think going forward, it's a, real, it's a good investment for us because we're going to ha start having some growth across the way here. Yeah. And, and it's going to be c commercial gr with a lot of hopefully equipment that we can tax yeah. and stuff. So I think it's wise that we get them under our yeah, uh, when I worked for Vision Appraisal prior to Municipal Resources, we used them for all our towns that did personal property in, you know, Massachusetts, Maine, Connecticut. And um, it's very, you know, they're a very highly respected firm. They've been around for a long time. They specialize mm -hmm. in this type of business. Um, we can go out to the, you know, the new businesses, but we, we're representing, we can only take what they give us for a value. They know what those values are and how to get them, how to get them. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, you, they're going to probably pay for themselves, you know, by uh, doing this uh, audit. That, that's a question I asked Steve before the meeting, yeah. you know, is, um, is you know, it, it, see, it seems like, you know, $10,000 to have them get all this paperwork and stuff for us is, you know, it might be a lot of money, but as we're talking about, yeah. you said over $3 million. Yeah, it's probably a little more than that. But yeah, then, between three, but, yeah, three property and five. Personal property that three you know, four. we need to keep track of. Yeah. Is, uh, it sounds like a fairly small thing. And, and anything that, would, as Steve said, is we've spent more than that in attorney's fees in the last couple okay. of years. Yeah. Yeah. And it may not be as much as that going forward if you wanted to do it on a yearly basis. I think they could do it for, you know, the first time is going to be a new, yeah, so a new account from. Yeah. But I think going forward it'd be, it would be less than that. Yeah. And normally in the other towns in Agunquit and in, in, um, in Kittery that we've done, it's always paid for itself. They've made, they've picked up enough, you know, enough personal property value to cover the cost of what yeah. what they charge. Are they are they just collecting it better, or are they just are they, do their um, values? Well, they know more of what better. to look for, and okay. and you know they know how to classify things differently than we do. We don't. We're not an expert in personal property. Mm -hmm. um, they have the resources to do that, and you know to to give us the correct value. Mm -hmm. And if they can't get in, they, they can estimate it better than we could. So they know what it costs to run a convenience store. Or they know what it is for, you know, um, a pizza place, you know, or something like that. So yeah. With all the stuff that the marijuana businesses that we have, yeah, exactly. there's going to be a lot of personal property just in that alone. Yeah, yeah I don't know how many we got now, four or five, I guess, different. Yeah, there's about five. About five different growing. grow operations, so. That stuff, you know, that, that adds up. There's a lot of value there. Yep. Thank you, Paul. All right. You're welcome. Um, so you want a motion? Yep. 
And we already put this cost into the budget, just in case. Uh, so we don't have to go back and do that. Uh, this is the personal property appraisal contract that yep. we're talking about? Yes. You're all set. Thank Perfect. you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I will make a motion that we accept the contract between Town of Berwick and Real Estate Research Consultants Incorporated as presented to us for the sum of, where was it? $9,120. I had it yep. tagged and then second lost it. In. Second page in. Yeah. I'll second yeah. the motion. Um, any discussion? Is uh, just is uh, written here somewhere that there's 152 separate accounts that we have. So yeah, uh, it's sixty dollars per account. Right, that's what it was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, I didn't I didn't realize there was that many accounts. So, <laughs> Personal property and, accounts uh, and growing. Yeah. So we have a motion in the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Great. Thank you. Thank you. And, I don't have a copy of that to sign, do I, Patty? Yep, it's in the to sign folder. Yeah. I'll find it sooner or later. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, that brings us to. All right. The warrants. Yeah, yeah. Figure out where we go in here. Warrants. All right, <clears throat> and the new business is the June 9th, 2020 annual town meeting warrant. There's. Um, so is this, I'm just going to read through it, article by article, is uh, we don't vote on it tonight, is uh, just comments, any changes, anything like that. Um, all right, article one, to elect a moderator. Article two, elect by secret ballot, two selectmen and one school board member. Article three. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance? If you have any questions, just jump in because I'm just going to read down. Okay, yep. Yeah. Article 4. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance regarding adult use marijuana? Article 5. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed addition of the marijuana establishment licensing ordinance to the land use ordinance? regarding marijuana establishments. <clears throat> Article 6. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendment to the subdivision regulations? Article 7. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed rezoning request for one law at 20 Rochester Street from I-1 to CI in the and the vi village overlay district? So it's going from residential one to the commercial industrial. Article eight, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed recreation master plan? Article nine, shall the town vote to use up to $2,900,000 from estimated revenues to reduce the amount to be raised by taxation in fiscal year 2020-2021, which begins July 1st, 2020. What does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah. It, it means that all of the little pots of money that we collect revenue, mm -hmm. excise tax, revenue sharing, um, fees that we collect for plumbing permits, and it's a long laundry list. And what we do is we estimate using that to offset the taxes mm -hmm. uh, it, when we commit the taxes. Okay, and that's just the amount that we have garnered over the past year. So it's an estimate, yeah. and we hope that we collect it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're it's usually, to, yeah. well, just to give you an example, last year we, we did a lot more. We collected um, revenue sharing, exceeded what we thought, uh, excise tax exceeded what we thought. So we had a nice bit, jump in our uh, Undesignated fund balance. So this year. is this this includes the revenue sharing coming from the state. Yeah. Okay. 
Article 10. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $346,325 for the general expense account for fiscal year 2021? I'm not going to go through it begins July 1st every time. So. Article 11. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $411,431 for the town administration account? Article 12. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $297,482 for the town clerk account? Article 13. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $202,800 for the planning account? Article 14. <clears throat> Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $114,400 for the assessor's office? Article 15. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $180,150 for the town hall account? Article 16. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for the general assistance account? <clears throat> Article 17. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,997,749 for the police department? Article 18. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,091,148 for the fire department? Article 19. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,138,674 for the public works account? Article 20. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $297,662 for the Berwick Public Library? Article 21. Shall the town vote to authorize the expenditure of all revenues received from the state of Maine, urban, Rural Initiative Program for fiscal year 2020, 20, 2020, there we go, for road improvements as authorized by the program with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. Article 22, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $546,317 for the refuse disposal account. Article 23, Shall the town vote to raise the taxes of the sum of $120,901 and appropriate the sum of $100,000 from the existing recreation revenue account for a total of $220,909 for the recreation account? 901. Nope, 901. Sorry about that. <laughs> $220,901. <laughs> Article 24. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $542,037 for the debt service to cover the appropriation for fiscal year 20, 2020? Article 25. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $26,450 for the community agency appropriations account? Article 26, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $196,388 for annual fire protection, i.e. the fire hydrants. <clears throat> Article 27, shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of investing in the capital purchase and replacement of fire department apparatus and ve vehicles for fiscal year 2020 and place this amount into the fire department capital account established for this purpose with any unspent balances to carry forward each year until fully expended. Article 28. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $400,000 for uninsured fund balance for fiscal year 2020 and authorize its use for road, bridge, sidewalk construction and repairs, as well as town parking lots and public ways including expenses for curbing, drainage, and engineering fees when required, with funds to be used in conjunction with the State of Maine Urban and Rural Initiative Program, with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. 
Article 29. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 for use of road, bridge, and sidewalk construction and repairs, as well as town parking lots and public ways, included expenses for curbing drainage engineering fees when required, with funds to be used in conjunction with State of Maine Earl Urban Rural Initiative Program with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. <clears throat> Article 30. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 for the first lease payment for the purchase of one new police cruiser for fiscal year 2020 and place this amount into the police capital equipment account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended and authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a lease purchase agreement on terms it deems appropriate with the balance to be repaid over a period of no longer than five years. Article 31. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $42,000 for fiscal year 2020 and authorize its use for continued addressing storm drainage system outfall issues identified the, by the Maine Department of Environmental Protection during an audit of the town's stormwater drainage system and place this amount into the planning capital reserve account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 32. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 and authorize the Board of Selectmen to hold it in a contingency account and to use it to meet unanticipated expenses and emergencies that might occur during the fiscal year 2020 and with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. What does it consider emergencies and expenses? Steve? Oh, on which article are we look, talking about? 32. 32. The, yeah, that, that's a contingency account. We carry that forward every year, but there have been two times, I think, this year that we request, asked if we could take money from that to cover expenses that we didn't anticipate. One was the heating system? Was that one? No, of no, that was Lena Clark. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We moved that from there. I, I can't remember. But, yeah. but I, I just... I mean, we have a undesignated fund, right? I mean, what's well, the that's a no. This is a contingency fund. Okay. The con it, con con contingency is easier for us to draw upon. Yes, yeah, it easy. allows the board of selectmen to spend if needed from that account if it's not covered in some other account. Okay. Article thirty-three. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $24,000 for federal stormwater program for fiscal year 2020 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 34. <clears throat> Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $3,750 for economic development and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 35. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 for emergency management for fiscal year 2020 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 36. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $62,500 from the unassigned fund balance for SCBA personal protective gear, mobile radio, and CPR equipment for fiscal year 2020 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried <coughs> forward each year until fully expended. <coughs> Article 37. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $100,000 from an unassigned fund balance for fiscal year 2020 for few tank replacements at the public works as required by the DEP? Article 38. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,000 from the unfunded liabilities account for the unfunded liabilities account and place this amount into the account established for this purpose 
with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 39, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 for fiscal year 2020 and consecutive fiscal years for grant matching funds to be placed into this account and carried forward. Article 40, shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $41,600 from the unassigned fund balance for fiscal year 2020 and authorize its use for the purchase of police department capital items, including radios, taser equipment, fire firearms replacement, furniture, three laptop replacements, servers, and modems. Article 41. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $300,000 from the unassigned fund balance for fiscal year 2020 and authorize its use for the purchase and installation of a full-size elevator at the town hall. Article 42. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum not to exceed $120,000 from the unassigned fund balance for fiscal year 2020, 2020 and authorize its use for the installation of radiant heat in the apparatus bay of the new fire station. Article 43, shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $50,000 from the unassigned fund balance for fiscal year 2020 and authorize placing it in the recreation reserve account to be used for capital projects. Article 44, shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with landowners for purchase of property allow, that allows for the expansion of Memorial Field. That I will say the note on that, the funding for that would be used from the impact fees, not through the town taxes. Article 45, shall the town vote to authorize the use of interest money from the Lena Clark Trust Fund interest account when there are major repairs or maintenance needs at the town hall. <clears throat> Article 46, shall the town vote to charge interest on unpaid taxes at a rate of 9% per annum and to set the date when taxes due, when taxes committed for fiscal year 2020, become payable and due as of October 15, 2020, and April 15, 2021, with said interest to be collected after October 16, 2020, and April 16, 2021, and allow the tax collector to accept prepayment of taxes prior to the tax commitment date. Article 47, shall the town vote to set an interest rate of 4% as allowed by state law as a rate to be paid to taxpayers who pay amounts in excess of amounts in excess of amounts finally assessed and authorized any such interest paid on collectible taxes or abatements granted to be charged against the annual overlay. That is the warrant. Uh, one note on Article 27, it says that the Board of Selectmen already recommends it for yeah, a vote I of think. 4 to 0. Yeah, that's yeah, last year. Yeah, don't pay attention to that. That's <laughs> crossed <laughs> yeah. uh, Any questions of the warrant? I hope not. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, come on up to the microphone, Ken. Just a quick question. Ken Rain, uh, Article 43, what capital projects does the Recreation part Department have? I could give you a whole list of them, but I, uh, right now they're looking at uh, bathrooms uh, for and getting rid of the uh, porter potty. Uh, that's one project. Um, it might include uh, work on new fields if, if we are able to purchase land. Uh, uh, so hopefully that we, uh, Tom is actually in conversations with a local landowner who approached him about purchasing property. So it's, an, it's the first time I can honestly say that money had been put aside just for recreation. Yeah, I know, I've never seen it before. That's no, why I was and the recreation wondering. master plan addressed that, that uh, 
we need to start looking at putting some money aside. Very good, thank so, you. So, you know, some of the other things that we, we talked about is just the equipment replacement there. You know, there's a lot of the playground equipment is 20 years old or older and, uh, you know, need to be replaced. So there's a, there's a lot to be done there. Okay, yep. so. no problem. Thank you much. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Let's see. My only question is, do we actually have to have everything separated out like this? I mean, is that? Yeah. Well, yes. It is? It, it's called transparency. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I understand what you mean. No, I, I, it's, you know, it's so that the public knows what they're spend, the money is being spent for. Um, well, I just, I just mean there are some uh, small articles, you know, like the, the police capital improvements or whatever. I, I, I mean... Why can't that be included in the police department budget as it's a overall? It's, it's a capital expenditure, one time. That's a so okay. Different, so different color of money, kind yeah, of different, different pot different of money. Processes for it. Okay. And um, and and by setting it aside, we can collect interest on it too. Yeah. Now and these now these articles will all be on the ballot no matter what we vote, but the votes will just be whether the board recommends that we think they should pass that's or not. Right, right. And that's what the town receives as you know just guidance for lack of a better term and, and the whole thing about us actually you know the the count of you no know, five nothing or four one or whatever is that never happened in the past and back in a previous board quite a while back is there was a bunch of dissension over everything and that's when they instituted that um there'd been some talk about you know is you know just you know whether it passes or not to get on the warrant rather than having the breakdown. Mm -hmm. it, since I've been on the board, almost everything has been unanimous anyways. Yeah. You know. It's a state law that that be on the ballot. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because yeah. yeah. we never used to do it. It just went on. <laughs> and, and just a lot of this capital stuff that you see is coming from the unassigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not going to impact the taxes. Yeah, uh, it's money that you above and beyond the twelve and a half percent that we were required to keep in for operating expenses. Uh, as we and we and this past year, like I was saying earlier, we had a very good year, revenue year, so we had a little bit more money, but we're still leaving a large part of it in the, the unassigned fund balance. Yeah. So I did notice that. Yeah. Any other questions? Comments? And. Uh, so this is basically public introduction, and does public have a chance to comment on these next prior, meeting? Next meeting? The public hearing isn't until uh, April something. Um, so we vote March before 10th that. March you vote. Okay. On it. Of course, anyone can yeah, ask questions. I always like people point. talk anyway. Yeah, you know? but <laughs> the public hearing on the actual warrant that's going to ballot will be later. Okay, so that's yeah, af we, after we vote on it. Yes. Yeah, okay. which I don't understand because, you know, we have the public hearing after we already say. Well, it's because it's what you're presenting to right. the town right. with your recommendation. Okay. Um, that brings us to our second public comment. Is there any public comment? No Going twice. No comment. And we have no executive session. Um, other business non-agenda items. Um, I, I just want to bring something up. Oh, Steve and I talked about it briefly earlier today about the coronavirus scare. Oh, yeah. Is, um, is, you know, is something that we all need to be conscious of. Is, um, is I talked to uh, the, the fire chief about it today also. He said that there will probably be some more advice coming out about what should be done, but um, is my concern is with people in the town hall here. Yep. Is, you know, I want to make sure that we're prepared with hand sanitizers, masks, anything that Let's just order we need. a bunch of those. So, out. We, have, um, we have gloves, masks, hand sanitizer. You know, I can't force people to wear them, but they're there no, if they want. But also, when the public comes in, uh, do we have something available for them when they come up to the counter? Right. They no, could. They that's could. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 You know, for the public also, is uh, you know, it's just something that you know, it's in the early stages. We really don't know where it's all going. So, yeah. is it something that we need to be conscious of? 
We do know the fatality rate is 2%. Mm -hmm. So far. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it, the, the other thing is that it affects mostly old people. Yeah. <laughs> You're okay, Noah. Oh, yeah, thank goodness. Yeah. Well, I guess that won't affect us, <laughs> Ken. And, um, oh, any other business? Old or ancient. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Thank you. Hmm? <laughs> you did.